Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna review a recent paramotor launch from one of our students. The reason I wanna review this one in specific is because there's a handful of lessons that I think a lot of people will benefit from learning from. The whole point of this video is to be educational and show you some tricks, some tips, and things that maybe you can apply to your paramotoring. Let's get started with the video. Okay, so let's review this video. We've got a brand new student about to take his first flight with me. There's me, there's him. We've got enough wind here in Florida where he is able to do a reverse launch. So he's not doing a light wind forward inflation, he's doing a reverse launch in some wind. Let's get started. He inflates the wing nicely, comes up a little crooked. The thing I wanna point out first is how he took his time to turn around. You guys see how he took that little bit of time, that few seconds, seconds to just confirm that the wing is under control before he turns around. This is something I see people do a lot, and that is that they kind of get in a rush to turn around and go. If you've got the wind, if you have the conditions, there's no reason not to take that extra second to confirm control. The way I like to describe it is, is I say inflate, control, turn, control, go. Not inflate, turn, and go all in kind of one motion if you have the conditions. Obviously, if it's light winds or, you know, lighter than this winds, it could be a little different. But if you've got the wind conditions like he did this day, you should inflate the glider, confirm control while reverse, then turn around. If you just kind of rip around to forward without confirming that that wing is under control, you could take a 50% collapse without even realizing in the turn. You could lose and stall the wing in the turn. Lots of things can happen if you just kind of rush it. So let's keep going. The pilot turns around and again, instead of just blindly going, he confirms control. The wing is kind of coming down to his left. So he's pulling a little bit of right brake, walking under the wing, good kiting control here. He doesn't stall that right side by getting too heavy in the brakes. He's calm, he's controlled, he's collected. That's one thing that we like to see. And that's a example of somebody who has spent quite a bit of time of kiting. He is comfortable controlling that wing on the ground. He is comfortable keeping control of that glider uh, he's not in a rush you know that's one of the things that I see with guys that are going to launch is they're in this rush to get off the ground no 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 take that time confirm control a good launch starts with a good setup so he inflated the wing he controlled he turned he re-controlled versus just blindly going and now that he has it under control we can look forward he starts to apply that throttle. He starts to go. The wing comes down a little bit. He's watching it. He's keeping it under control. He's not in a rush, right? He's focused on just keeping that glider under control. He starts to go. He starts to go. A little more throttle, a little more throttle, and boom. He kind of sort of pops off the ground. Now, he doesn't really jump but he kind of pulls some brakes. You guys can see the trailing edge of the wing is deflected, indicating that he's pulled some brakes. So he kind of popped himself up off the ground. Another common thing that new pilots do that isn't the greatest thing to do is being in a rush to get off the ground. Look, you could run all the way across this field with that wing lifting 90% of the weight and the motor pushing you, and it's almost no physical work. Taking a bit of time, having a long launch is way better than jumping into the seat and coming slamming back down into the ground. So one of the things that we talk about a lot during our training classes as we're leading up to the first flight is how a long launch is better. A long launch is a better launch than a short rushed jump in the seat launch. Look, you're going to you're going to speed up how long it takes you to get into the sky, right? It's going to be a shorter launch as you get better and better. But when you're new, do not be afraid to run down the 
the field. Keep those feet down. Force yourself to run down the field. This is a lesson that we talk about with the class. We watch some videos and, you know, I show examples. This is even one of the examples. And it's like, look, you don't want to rush that launch because if you rush the launch, the chances of you coming back down is really, really high. So you want to take that time. You want to just keep on going. As long as you have your glider control skill like he does, because we really prioritize good glider control, and then you could go all the way down the field and never lose control because he has control. So let's keep going and see what happens. You can see he gets off the ground and guess what? He comes right back down. So one little thing that we could look at is that trailing edge again. It almost seems like he might have put his hands up just like a little tiny bit. Even one or two inches will kind of bring him back down. So if you do get into that sky, let's say you somewhat jump or you pull some brakes and you pop off the ground, you don't want to put your hands back up after you've gotten off the ground because if you do, you're going to come back down to the ground. You have to hold what you've pulled. Hold what you've pulled. If you use those brakes to get you off the ground, hold those brakes. Don't put them back up. One thing he did well is he kept his feet below him. Another thing that people do is their feet come up and they just like don't want to be running. And one of the things that we talk a lot about is keeping those feet down. He forced his feet down. He kept himself running. He stayed committed to the launch, not just blindly holding power or, you know, kind of freezing up and locking up. And because of that, if we keep going, you can see he runs and he gets off the ground again and he keeps on going and keeps on going until right here. So he kept his feet down, he kept running and ultimately that got him back into the sky. Kept the throttle on, held the brakes that he had. Maybe he had put them up like an inch or so from when he initially got off the ground, but he held at the new spot and that ultimately got him off the ground. But here we are, maybe 15 feet off the ground and what happened? He dumped the power. So this is something that's more common than you think. When you take off for the first time, it's scary as can be because you almost feel like you're going to go over backwards. It's a very, uh, you could say, overwhelming feeling to be looking up at the sky. And people think that they're literally looking straight up when the reality is, is they're nowhere near looking straight up, but it feels like that. And so what do they do? Well, they dump the throttle because it's scary. And that's a big, big no-no. You don't want to just dump the throttle because if you dump the throttle, you're going to see exactly what happens. You come diving back down towards the ground. So in this situation, when you get off the ground, and this is something that we also talk a lot about, and this is something you should do. When you take off and you're in the sky, the only thing you're focused on is climbing out straight until you're at about 100 feet. You're not worried about your seat. You're not worried about which direction you're going. You're worried about taking off as straight in a line as you can to about 100 feet. And the reason that I really push for that is because people are often in a rush to get in the seat, and in the rush to get in the seat, your mind stops flying the aircraft and you start thinking about the seat, and as a result, you can come down like this. Or people get in a, a you know, mind lock looking at where they're going and now they start to turn when they shouldn't be prioritizing a turn because they're way too low. The thing you focus on is climbing in a straight line, smooth, calm, and in control. So let's keep going and see what happens. The pilot dumps the throttle and he comes back down to the ground, just like we talked about. However, in this situation, thankfully, we were able to get him to get back on the power and he was gonna climb away. Had he not gotten back on the power, this would have been a landing. He would have landed right there. Had he not flared for landing, he would have been just fine. It would have just been a, a rougher butt landing. The MacFly frame would have taken it and been just fine, as most paramotor frames can actually handle a butt landing like that, no problem. Probably would have broken a prop if the motor was still on. It's good to kill your motor when you're coming to land, but landing is a whole nother story. So in this situation, he reapplied that throttle and he continued to climb. Now, after he got on that throttle and he started to fly away, he was a little in and off of the throttle band. And I could totally understand why. It's really intimidating to be on that throttle and facing the sky. So one thing that I do when I'm on radio with guys that are a little intimidated by that power is I just try to get them to hold whatever power setting they're comfortable with. So whatever they get to, I just have them stay at. And I just try and reassure them that, hey man, you're gonna be okay, it's, it's okay, I'm right here. We're on radio, everything looks good. Just hold whatever throttle you have right now. Don't worry about anything else. Let's just maintain that throttle setting. And I like to get them some time. You know, I like to get them 10, 20, 30 seconds in the sky for them to catch their breath a little bit, for them to realize what's going on. Even if they maybe only get to 50 feet, 
you know, we're, we're just focused on con- calming the pilot down so that they can continue to perform correctly. And that's one big thing that the instructor should be f- focusing on. The instructor shouldn't just be screaming instructions at the pilot in this moment. You cannot just be screaming instructions at a pilot in this moment. The, the pilot in this situation is, is nervous and you can tell just based on their actions. What you need to do is calm them down and try and get them to perform better and do whatever it is that they can do. So we did, we got the pilot to maintain a throttle setting. We got him to climb up to a good altitude. We got him to calm down and, and honestly, he had a phenomenal landing and a great flight and that was his first flight. And and you did a great job, buddy, and I'm glad you got up there. Your landing was great. Launch was, even though we had a little bit of an up and down, all around was a great job. All right, guys, with all of that being said, that is it for this video. If you are interested in more about our paramotor training course that we offer, we have a video breaking down every single day of our class, as well as more information on our website. Visit backcountryppg.com to learn more about our training program. My name is Trevor Steele. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.